In this video, I will be performing a buckling analysis on this flat plate. Full details of this exercise are on page 407 of the PDF linked in the video description below. I'll go ahead and uh, start a new patch on session. The units for this example are in inches, pounds, and PSI. I'll start a new file, save it to a folder here, call it problem 18. Click OK here. And first I'll create a surface defining the entire plate using the XYZ method here. The plate has a width of uh, 16, a height of 4, and a depth of 0. Hit apply. Now I'll create a separate group by going to group create. I'll call this quarter section because in this example we're modeling just a quarter section of it. Make sure you have make current and then uh, this there won't be anything in this group so click apply. So now what I have are two different groups. So I have that one. Default group had that surface and now a uh, quarter section doesn't have anything. Make sure quarter section is made set to current. Click OK on this group tab. I'll make another uh, surface. And it goes uh, 8 inches in the X, 2 inches in the Y, and 0 in the Z. And here, uh, my origin is at 8, 2, 0. Close it and hit apply. So this is the quarter section we'll be uh, playing with in this example. So I'll focus here. I'll first create my properties. So under isotropic, create one called mat. Under input properties, give it a Young's modulus of uh, 10 E6 and 0.33. Click OK and hit apply to create this material. Now let's apply this material to the section. So here under 2D properties, click shell. Call this prop under input properties. Let's use this material. Let's give it a thickness of uh, 0.1 inches. Click OK. For your application region, let's select this surface. Notice it uh, changes color, indicating we've selected it. So surface 2, add it, OK, and apply. Now we can go ahead and define our boundary conditions. Since we're defining a quarter section, we need to apply symmetric conditions here and here. So select nodal displacement constraint. Here under new set name call it sim y. For your input data let's go ahead and uh, restrain movement in the x direction. Leave everything else blank. Let's prevent rotation about the the y and z. So type in a zero for the fifth and the sixth. And these are commas in between the values. Click OK for your application region. We only want to select curves, so select this icon here. You'll notice it only allow me to select the uh, curves. Now let me hide this uh, other section. It's conflicting with the picking. Uh, when you turn off groups on and off, it pops up this tab. You can just cancel that. Here, select this curve. Add it. OK. And apply. Now I'll make a new one called Cement. Sim X and your input data are restraint is or the two direction is constrained. Everything else is blank and for rotations the the fourth and the fifth directions or the sixth directions are constrained. So here's two, four, and six. Click OK for application region select this curve. Curve 4 of surface 2, add it, OK, and apply. And now we want to add simple supports to the outside. So we'll uh, call this one simple support. For input data, we just want to prevent translation in the third direction. And this could be just uh, brackets here. Click OK, your application regions select these uh, outer curves. 
So here I have curves three and two of surface two, add, okay, and apply. Now we'll go ahead and add a pressure here. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, turn on the other one. So right now we're still working on the quarter section. So for pressure, after I click that icon, give it a name of pressure. Uh, we're working with two dimensional elements, so select 2D. For input data, your edge pressure will be 100 PSI. So click OK, application region. We are working with uh, the edges. So here I can just, uh, you know, notice it's trying to pick this entire thing, but we don't want that. We just want to work with this quarter section. The game, close this tab if it opens. Select this curve, add it, select this curve, and add it. OK, and apply. Let me reorient orient this in the front view. And you'll see uh, where we're going with this. Now it's time to mesh this. So let me go to meshing, apply some seeds around the corners or the edges. Under mesh seeds, select uniform. The number we're trying to get here is 24 for the these top and bottom curves. And we're trying to get six along the vertical curves. I'm gonna go and mesh this with quad elements. Simply select the surface and hit apply. Now you'll see that your boundary conditions again look like they're being applied at the nodes, at just the nodes. For a better representation, go to display, load, BC element props. Scroll down, turn on show on fem only and hit apply. Turn on and off your boundary conditions. You'll get a better idea of how the conditions are actually applied to your mesh. Let me go back to the front view and view the actual entire section. So here we've defined one fourth of the section with appropriate boundary conditions. So now we can perform our analysis. So go to analysis and select entire model. For solution type, select uh, buckling here. It should be a 105. Click OK and select apply. Once that comes in, go to access results, click XDB, hit apply, and it imports the results. Go to the results tab. Here you'll notice that my buckling factor is 6.133. And here I can view the eigenvectors translational, but before that I'll actually modify my pressure to reflect this new buckling factor. So it was 613. Click OK and apply. And the way I did that was uh, here on the model tree, I just right clicked and modified the, the data. And if I zoom in now, you'll see a 613 throughout the edge here. Let me reanalyze this. Let me replace the old files. Let me re-import the XDB file. And when I go to results, you'll notice my buckling factor is now one. Let me turn off the boundary conditions. Let me show the fringe and the deformation result for translational eigenvectors. Now this is what I get when we compare this to the exercise. That is in fact what we do get, 613 pounds per inch. Make sure to save this and this concludes this video.